Okay, we're about two weeks in to the new 200 gallon reef tank. It's a oceanic tank. It's seven foot by two foot by two foot. So two feet tall and two feet deep. I added about a hundred more pounds of the Takani live rock the branchy kind of rock that you got up here up top and I also added 50 pounds of Marco rock you can see it there I'm starting to get some nice algaes growing on it I say nice they're brown but they're algaes nonetheless this video makes the tank look very blue it's not that blue but uh Things are okay. It's starting to, to even out and calm down. My uh, my SPS were not happy when I did the tank move. So you can see that. I mean, it's it's alive, but they've lost almost all their color. So I'm not quite sure, you know. As far as I could tell, my alkalinity was fine. Uh, I may have had a nitrate spike, but I'm not sure. Uh, but most of the LPS corals, the frog spawn and the, the hammer and whatnot, are, are doing fine. So I'm not quite sure, you know, but they're, they're a little more tolerant to change than the others. Uh, So far it's working pretty good, uh, most of my corals did fine. Fish wise, uh, my, purple my purple tang uh, did fine, uh, my hippo did fine, I actually, I didn't know what happened to him when I did the tank move, he, uh, or she, I say he or she, I don't know, um, was Basically, I moved everything over, but I didn't know where the hippo was. I couldn't find the hippo, and I couldn't find the bicolor blenny. And then uh, about 30 minutes later, here they are, swimming in the 200. So I'm not quite sure you can see them. You can see the bicolor blenny there. And he hides inside of rocks, so I'm pretty sure that's what happened to him. Uh, the clowns are fine. I have both of them. They've actually started. I've been catching them hosting in the nephia. So it's kind of neat. I'm not sure why that's up with that. Uh, my yellow tang did die when I, when I did the tank move. So uh, I'll, I'll get another one. Um, I'm not sure why, because I mean he was always a healthy guy. So I'm, I'm not sure why he would have died off. But you know, hey. Um, so I got this cell fin so far, the cell fin tang, uh, in place of him, and I'll probably get another yellow here uh, a little later. Uh, I got a school of uh, blue-green chromies. You can see the kind of bluish fish there. They they school together. It's kind of neat to see them swimming in the same place. So far, the other fish just kind of swim with them too. So anyway, uh, I plan on getting some more amphias. Uh, for whatever reason, the other two that were in my trio died. Uh, they were eating fine when I did the tank move. So I, I'm not sure. I guess they got stressed out by the same thing that stressed out the yellow tank. Uh, you know, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, for flow in this tank, I have a, actually a single Mag-18 running my, uh, returns up here. I did have two Mag-18s, uh, but they, basically it put the water level so high that you could see the center median. And I didn't like that look at all. I liked the look of the water on the top moving, so... I, uh, I went down to it, and technically 218s was way overkill anyway. Uh, the other thing I have is I bought two Vortec MP40 pumps. So the motor is on the outside of the tank, and the actual uh, propeller is on the inside. And so what it does is it variates the flow. And so you, if you watch the coral, you can see that it gets little bursts of flow uh, 
based on whatever setting that I have it on. It'll go from a stronger flow to a lighter flow. It'll pulse flow, uh, what, depending on what time of day it is. And I mean, you can see the polyps there. As you can see here, if you watch the nap, yeah. you can kind of watch it. It'll be a little stronger. And it'll kind of chill for a second. And then it'll get back strong again. And then it'll get back chill again. And it's pretty cool. It's a, I like it. I like the variation of it. Uh, you know. uh, I have some newer SPS that I'm trying. I say I'm trying. I'm replacing. Uh, I have this purple Monipora and this uh, green uh, SPS colony. And they, uh, ooh, cell fan. Uh, I mean, they're doing fine. But my other ones still aren't doing good. So I'm not very sure, you know, what the deal is. Because those are doing fine. My new uh, green one is doing fine. It almost doesn't look green in this video, but it's, it's very green in the tank. Uh, but you know, the old ones still aren't happy. But I guess it's just stress. They stress just like any other animal. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Um, lighting. I no longer have the metal halides. I now have uh, three Evolution 150 watt uh, LED fixtures. And uh, they're supposed to light three foot by two foot by two foot. Or actually just over two feet, I think. Depth and two, two feet uh, width. And so they light the tank very well, very even. Um, the beauty of these guys is LEDs use a lot less power than the halides and the VHOs and heat I don't feel any heat from them now I feel heat and as you can see I mean I'm literally right on them to feel heat from them and obviously heat is a big issue in Texas uh, it's nice and hot and your tank can't get very hot uh, so yeah they're pretty cool I got a couple of uh, settings that I can do on them to change the color of the tank. Uh, you can dim the whites or the blues based on kind of what you want. Uh, one of my new additives for the tank is I got myself a, a Neptune Apex tank controller. And so, oh, it's down like an update. Oh, I'll wait for this thing. But um, basically, what it is is I can control the fish tank from a computer browser or my phone. So I'll, I'll pull up my phone here and I'll pull up my, if it'll respond, there we go, pull up my apex and it'll tell me what my temperature is, what my pH is, uh, and I can go in and I can, oops, push the wrong button. Uh, I can turn off things, I can turn off my lights, or my uh, fans, or my pumps, or what, uh, what not. Uh, so for example, if I want to change the color of the tank right now, and turn off my white lights, I push off, and it changes the color. And so this will show you how the tank looks with just the blue LEDs. It's almost, is that a glare on this? It looks like it is, you can barely even see. That's a camera picking it up kind of funny. But basically you can see that the greens obviously pop. The orange up top pops too. Jeez, the camera cannot take this color. It looks horrible on here. I'm guessing the video will probably be the same. And then I can go through again. I'll turn off the blues. Now that's just the VHOs. I have two six-foot VHO bulbs on there. So it still, still looks kind of funny. Uh, it's not as weird. The camera picks this up better, for sure. But things, things nice pop nice on the VHOs. I, I, really, I really like them. That's why I kept them. Uh, the colors come out real nice. Um... Uh, and then I can do different combinations, like if I wanted to do the whites and the VHOs. This is how it'll look. And 
then I'll turn the blues back on. It gives it that aquarium look, for sure. And like I said, this video looks very blue. Very, very blue. But it doesn't look nearly that blue in person. Um, so yeah, the controller will control it. it. It'll turn off things if it's getting too hot. It'll turn on my alkalinity doser if it's getting... Uh, my pH gets too low, etc., etc. Uh, filtration down here. Uh, I have my granular ferric oxide working on the phosphates, if any. Uh, my tests have shown all zero so far, so I doubt I'll have any trouble. Right now, I've just caught carbon sitting on the mag 18. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a, a reactor to do those. I haven't decided just yet. Um, the skimmer in here is my ASM G2. It's rated for 200 gallons, so technically it's a little too small for this tank. Uh, I haven't decided. I, I think I'm going to get stick with the same model. I had a Euro Reef that I got with this tank, and it uh, it, it uh, stopped working. The pump stopped working. It flipped the breaker, and uh, I tried it in a couple different plugs, and it's still flipping the breaker. So uh, I'm pretty sure that it's overheating, and there's a short or something like that. Um, but that, that skimmer was just too dang tall and didn't work good enough for me to try to keep it. So I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna get rid of it and uh, go from there. Max, go somewhere. My dog's trying to say hi. Uh, I just plumbed my bio pellets straight into my skimmer. I, I'd been meaning to do it, but I couldn't find anything that would fit the skimmer pump. So what I did was I got two PVC fittings and I sanded down the one and plugged it straight into the pump. And my skimmate was, you couldn't even see it in, the, in, the, in there yesterday. And it had been running for two days. As soon as I plumbed it straight in, that's what I got. So if you run bio pellets, definitely plumb straight in. It, it made a heck of a difference, for sure. Um, the other power things that I do have, because I don't, I don't have to control everything, but I do need more power stuff. So I got this little DJ station. And it's pretty neat. I can control little things that I don't need to turn off that much. Like my, I have my, my main pumps here, my skimmer here. Uh, this is, what is that? I don't know what that is. Those are the reactors. So that's my uh, GFO, my carbon, not my carbon, my GFO, my bio pellets, that sort of thing. Um, I have this light that's lighting everything underneath here on one of these switches. Uh, it's pretty nifty. I like that so that if I need to turn off a pump, I can do it just by flipping a switch instead of unplugging plugs, trying to figure out what stuff is. Uh, this is the custom um, uh, reservoir that I got. A uh, guy up in here in Austin made it for me out of acrylic. Uh, it's the exact dimensions that would fit as much water as I could in it so that I don't have to refill it maybe once a week or so, if that. Um, so that'll automatically top off my tank with my RODI water. Uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. It's been, you know, trials and tribulations on getting things settled in and getting things buffered out. I'm still waiting for things to kind of finish working themselves out as far as, uh, you know, the corals getting happy again and all that. But I remember in my first, when I first set up the 90, it was, it took a little bit for things to get happy. Uh, I, I did take a, took the opportunity to set up a decent quarantine tank. I had that extra 55 gallon that I used to get my Marco rock ready. And so I've set up me a little uh, quarantine and I'm gonna keep this one this time. So that way I can get new fish and put them by themselves. Make sure they don't have any disease. Make sure they're eating good. Uh, they'll get used to me so they're not scared when they see me. I'm like this guy's still kind of scared. I only had him about three days. But he's eating good. Uh, I tie me in some seaweed there, and uh, you know, this way I don't spend any more money on fish that end up dying on me. Because Lord knows my purple tang and anybody else in this tank can give people a hard time. So there's the new 200 gallon uh, reef. It's young, we'll give it time, and hopefully it'll get up to where I would really like it to be.